Enshrouded is an open world survival RPG that can be played solo or with up to 16 other players, in which you must build a base, rescue NPCs, farm resources out in the world, and craft ever more powerful gear to cleanse the world of a corrupting mist called the Shroud, by locating and chopping down Shroud Roots, which in turn grants you with skill points to help you take on harder bosses, different biomes, and other challenges. In my previous video, I covered Enshrouded in a first impressions format, however in this video I'll finish all of the content currently available in the game at this stage of early access, and give my full pros and cons list review at the end. And yes, my opinion is actually quite a bit different after 50 hours than it was at 15. Previously, we created a character that surprisingly looked a lot like me. We awoke from the Cinder Vault and immediately got to exploring what appeared to be a vast mysterious world full of interesting POIs to explore. I built a house and was instantly blown away by Enshrouded's building system. I learned that attacking explosive barrels with melee weapons probably isn't the smartest thing to do, and I cleared multiple POIs, looted chests, and found myself rather baffled at the game's loot system. We ended the first impressions at level 12 after getting about halfway through the forest biome with a set of mid-game gear. Let's see how my opinion on Enshrouded changes as we take on the end game. But first, today's sponsor, Luck Catch. 2, the ultimate multiplayer socio-economic MMO set in a world brimming with magic, dragons, and flying ships, available exclusively on PC via Steam. Luck Catchers 2 offers an unparalleled gaming experience designed for players aged 16 and above. Explore numerous territories, build cities, mine rare resources, and engage in thrilling battles against pirates. Experience the excitement of constructing and managing settlements, trading goods, and boarding ships to destroy caravans. Immerse yourself in a world with fire-breathing dragons, and embark on epic adventures aboard ships, airships, and strekelets. Take control of your settlements and fleets, shaping your destiny in this expansive open-world environment. Experience unlimited opportunities with character development with a dynamic skill learning system that unlocks new adventures. Whether you prefer to journey alone or with friends, the choice is yours. Unlock exclusive in-game items by using my promo code TLP, and don't miss out on your chance to enhance your gaming experience in Luck Catchers 2. Join the adventure today and explore a realm filled with fire-breathing dragons, dynamic conflicts, and endless possibilities. Download now and begin your epic journey in Luck Catchers 2. Welcome back to Enshrouded, where we're going to be continuing from where we left off with our first impressions video. So if you haven't seen it already, I recommend checking out that video first and then watching this one. But the goal with this one is to fully complete the game and do a full review. The only thing I've done since my previous video is re-roll my stats over to a mage build and just did a little bit of work on the house. Planted a bunch of flax, tended my gardens, and that's basically it. So the first thing we should do is go test out the power of the mage build. Level 15 mushroom creature here. Let's test out some mage abilities. Okay, if we can hit it. The power of the wand. Melting the level 15 pigs. Yeah, wand seems pretty strong. This looks like a boss of Oh, it is a boss arena. Fucking hell, it's almost one shot me. How do you quit the fight? Bro, we need to give up. We are not ready for that. That's like an end game boss, surely. Where's the way out? Game, you could have warned me. No, we're literally just stuck here. I mean, we can attempt it, but I just know that my weapon has does not have the durability to even fight the thing. Actually, maybe. I have a bit of confidence. Yeah, we can do it. Can we TP home? TP home, because we need to repair our wand. Come on. We got out. Let's go get another wand before we attempt that again, plus a bunch of healing potions. We can probably do it. It's just a case of do we have the durability. Durability is your bloody bottleneck in this game. Okay, let's make an attempt at this boss. At least I know what I'm getting myself in for now. Switch to the wand. Keep dodging. Kill the adds with the sword. Run behind the columns. Let's pop a bandage. Keep damaging it. Got it to about half HP. Dodge. We are popping off here. Oh my god, that almost killed me. Big heal. Finally, the first big boss fight we've had. Big damage. Finish it. Come on. Ah, oh, there it is. We got it. Defeat the Shroud Wyvern. Yeah, that was the hardest challenge that we've had in the game so far. A legendary ring. I think that's good. I'm not sure. That's two paths I can take here. I can park all that wall or I can go here. We need to fully explore this place. I'm expecting some 
epic loot after killing that boss. We can run, jump, we can swing over here. So am I maybe just trying to locate the treasure that I have earned? Ah, a hidden area here. Anything good? Guard of the North Helmet. That's more like it. We got some decent loot in the end. Let's go explore the next location. It's a rather epic bridge in the distance. Found our next target. Let's glide on over. Oh, we got a big boy here. No match for the power of the wand. Wait, this one's doing giga damage now that I've just leveled it up. Mate, is the wand OP? Fucking feels it. This is huge. We can finally make a medium backpack. More inventory space certainly feels good. So next we need to make the advanced glider. I've just realized this, but the game actually incentivizes you to make normal furniture because it gives you comfort, which increases the duration of the rested buff. I've never really noticed this. That's really cool. I love that the game does that. It gives you a reason to build out your house. Put the bench here near the table. Looks good. Okay, it, this has just made me love the game even more. That's made my house look infinitely more cozy. And now we've got a 35 minute rested buff. Realistically, we probably don't even need more than that. I thought I need to just walk through the shroud to get here, but once again, vertical cliff face. Traversing the map in this game is quite frustrating a lot of the time, especially if you're going through fog of war, because the world's design is extremely gamey due to the shroud. Like, it doesn't feel like a very naturally forming world. You've got these massive canyons all over the place, which facilitate the shroud, and then you've got, like, cliff faces, and it's, like, all over the map. So in terms of world's layout, it doesn't feel very immersive. It's very, very gamey. And that's uh, something that I've started to feel the more that I've played this game. Shroud mechanic does start to feel like a bit of a gimmick after a while. Let's equip the advanced glider. That's going to massively increase my range. It also looks better. Let's test out the new glider. Oh, that's better. Now we're moving. So now we can finally upgrade our flame from level three to level four. Character attribute bonuses, three. So I guess that's gonna make me a bit stronger as well. Oh, and the boss that I killed earlier, I did indeed need to kill. I just didn't see that this was a requirement. So good thing that I did that. There it is, flame level four. So this was the area that was previously deadly shroud. And now that we've leveled up, it's no longer deadly. Very gamey. Looks like we might be heading into the desert now. Oh, what's this? Getting a feel for it, reach level 15. Oh, wow, we just got a thousand XP for traveling here. More skill points. Are we heading to the desert now already? I suppose so. Nice. What level are these enemies? Level 16. Not much stronger than what I've already fought. So now I've got a quest to find the masonry tools. Bloody annoying map design. Wait, unless I can climb up here. Doesn't really look climbable though, does it? We can try. <laughs> That was climbable, apparently. So what is this? Ah, an obelisk. So that's going to chart the surrounding area for me. Tell me where all the flame shrines are. We have located the masonry tools, so now I can build a well at my house, which is very much needed. It's kind of a cool visual, isn't it? Coming out of this cave, tons of light. I do like the lighting in this game a lot. Yeah, we're now in a different biome, more of a desert canyon biome. Conquered the springlands, conquered the forest. Now on to greater challenges. So we've retrieved his masonry tools. So now let's craft a water well. Place the well here. So now can I infinitely draw water without having to reload the game? So allow me to draw three water and, and that's it. Why is the well so useless in the game? Like three water is nothing. So still if I want water, even though I've built a well, I need to run over and use this well over here because this well lets me draw five yet the well that I've crafted lets me draw three. Don't really understand that to be honest. Like why would you make water be such a pain in the ass to get even when you've got a well? Baffling. It's supposed to be a boss here apparently. Volcar Brawler? Where? Hello there. Oh, he's over here. Hello. Oh, you've got a lot of health. I suppose you're a little bit tougher. Uh, is this mob AFK? He just like kind of stands there and lets me attack him. Seems a little bit easy, isn't it? Might be the easiest boss I've ever fought in a game ever. It'd almost be difficult to make easier bosses than this. <laughs> And it's not even that I'm playing a mage. Like, even if I was melee, you've got, like, so long to get out of his abilities. Slowly walk around him. Finish him off with melee, fuck it. Just attack him in the back. Bro, so easy that I killed him with melee when I'm a mage. Anything good? 
Ooh, is that a two-handed axe? Oh, it's a one-hand. No, it isn't. Is it? Is this one-handed or two-handed? I mean, it looks like it's one-handed, but I'm not using my shield. Like, it's big enough to be a two-handed weapon, but he's one-handing it. So I'm not sure. Well, that's got to be an upgrade, surely, as far as melee weapons go. We'll take that. I could finally replace this bloody sword that I've had since the start of the game. Let's test out the new weapon. Feels good. Apparently, it's really effective against these. Level 16. Did that bird just jump off a literal mountain to avoid me? It actually did. Mad lad. Looks like I found another fast travel tower. Let's climb to the top. All right, let's see what puzzles await us in here. Whoa! How am I going to get my stuff back? Oh my god, I got it back. Well, now I've lost the fucking rested buff. Okay, so how do we get past this? I suppose we need to double jump over it. And jump. Jump. Jump jump get the switch dying once and losing the rested buff is so punishing because you have to wait so long for your stamina to recharge like you're just standing there getting your time wasted there it is we've reached the top give me that fast travel you made me climb that and you didn't give me any loot that's the most stingy game when it comes to loot i think i've ever played you'll find an epic or a legendary in some random chest in the middle of nowhere you'll climb a tower and solve multiple puzzles and you'll get nothing i think we've found loot down here okay never mind all good guillotine mate it's a shame that the game can't give me a legendary wand or maybe it can. Let's check the top of the other spires. Has this gold chest reappeared here as well? No way you can just loot gold chests over and over and get different loot every time. There's no way. Uh, I think you can, you know. Yeah, once again, the loot is different. Okay, that seems a bit exploity, no? So you can just keep rolling random RNG weapons by looting these gold chests over and over not sure how i feel about that but we need a better wand i suppose and we've got a transcendental screen is this better than what we've currently got i think so oh this could be a big upgrade frozen core wand we are fucking stacked now not only do i have a mage sword but i've also got like a really good wand i've got a really good staff we are stacked Oh, is this a boss? I've never seen one of these before. A shroud boss. A fell monstrosity. We are messing that up. So I've got an acid ability. Let's pop acid bite. Oh, that's serious. Oh my god, it's almost like one shot the boss. That's broken, surely. Easiest boss in the game. That was so easy, it didn't even feel like a boss shield from up here never seen one of those before level 18 i want to go here but uh, how do you even get there exit the game and then teleport to the other point i suppose if you're gonna die to the shroud just exit the game not only does it reset all of your chests it just takes you out of the shroud so the entire core mechanic of the game is just bypassed with a little bit of brains what's this What's this? End of early access area. Mate, I'm just trying to get over here, but I can't see a path because the map design is literally impassable mountain face or you're in the bottom of a cavern in a shroud and I need to get here. I'm just so sick of the map design. I'm sick of traversing the world. Just getting from A to B is a massive pain in the ass at this point. Level 20 mobs now coming across bigger challenges. Found the route. What are we fighting? Oh, a big boy. Let's kill it with acid. Acid just two shots it. Level 19. Fell monstrosity. Lol. Can we just craft a flame altar and take over this ranch? I think we can. Yeah, let's just place the flame altar right here. This is my base now. And that's it. The base is mine, is it? Right. Here's the shroud route from earlier that I couldn't get to. Completely undefended. GG. Clear all of the Nomad Highlands shroud routes. Excellent. I guess we're done with the third biome now. On to the Canyon Zone, which is probably the last biome that we've got available in Early Access right now. And you've got this entire northern part of the map, which is bloody huge, which we can't access yet. All right, let's finally harvest all of this field. That's a lot of harvest. Looks very beautiful as well. I mean, it's almost worth not harvesting. Just keep it looking like this because it just looks good. I suppose I need to upgrade this again to go move on to the next area. So I've got the boss that I needed to kill. Next we need tin ore. Sparks fossilized bone. Where the hell do you get that? We finally have some leather. And now we can finally make the extraordinary glider. Oh, yo, my new glider's a fucking beast. My new glider is chatting. 
Okay, we've TP'd home, and now we can finally strengthen the flame to level 5. And now we're even stronger. Level 20, got some pretty decent gear. We're now about to head into the end game. So previously, this was all a red shroud, but now it's not. What is this? Level 21, like an armadillo. Sand digger meets scales. What the hell is that? Some flying creature in the distance. Let's go kill it. Come here, creature. Creature, stop fucking running. Get two hit. What's this? This looks like a, a mine of ore. Oh, sulfur. Eternal acid bite unlocked to alchemist. Mate, that's the most OP ability. We need to go make eternal acid bite. That's just a one hit win button. Right, so let's try and make eternal acid bite. This does 165 damage. What? The one I've got equipped only does 84 damage. So it's twice as powerful and it was already OP. What? I'm so excited to test this out. Let's go hunt down an elixir well. Let's test it on the uh, armadillo. What? That was ridiculous. Early access balancing. You've got to love it. I'd expect to find a boss. There we go. Uh, just random mobs. What was that spread damage? It hit things that I didn't even target. That's the most broken thing I think I've seen in gaming. Right, equip the staff, jump up here, target the boss, and just one-shot the boss. Will that one-shot the boss? Yeah, pretty much. That's level 22. That just gave me a 1,000 XP. Broken beyond belief. It's supposed to be a shroud route here. I guess it's on top of the mountain. Oh, no, it's below. How do we go below? I might just dig under the ground. All right, we'll just tunnel to it then. I can't be bothered to find the uh, random cave entrance. So we'll brute force it. Can you actually do that? Kind of cool if you can. Uh, yeah, we're, we're getting there. We're tunneling pretty deep. One eternity later. Oh my God, look how far we've tunneled. There's just a massive hole in the ground. I love that you can just tunnel to the uh, locations below. So soon we should break through. Oh, yeah, we've found light. <laughs> Have I just tunneled directly to the shroud I have? That is so cool that you can do that. I absolutely love that. Oh, and it's guarding a gold chest. Nice. Chop, chop. There it is. That's so cool, man. I tunneled so far down. So where was the actual way? This is the way I was supposed to go. Some giant cave where realistically I've got no hope of finding the entrance. Just some vague location. Or you can just tunnel underground and get to it that way. Tunneling underground is definitely the most fun way. I'm going to max out this legendary wand and see how much damage we can do. So the level of the wand is already maxed out because we've upgraded it and it's now level 25. And as you can see, that the damage doesn't even increase. Same with my Frozen Core Wand and my Scorching Wand. When I got these, they weren't level 25, but you can level up weapons to level 25. So basically, once you're level 20 plus, you can max out that gear in terms of damage because it caps at 25. Although given that the game's in early access and level 25 is probably not going to be the level cap forever, it will probably go beyond that at a later point. So now we have a Shock Wand added. That looks bloody cool. Is this iron? Or? Let's find out. Yes. Mine every kind of valuable material in the Kindle Wastes. Cool. Now I'm just going to put in some time to make an iron pickaxe and an iron axe. It just saves so much time in the long run. Always a prio to upgrade your tools. How do you make iron ore? Please be nice and simple. Literally just charcoal and iron. Fantastic. So that's 40 damage. That's so much better. I've almost finished the game. All I need is mats to strengthen the flame. Conveniently placed my base right next to a gold chest so I can just loot it every single time. Ethereal plane. Level 25 shield. Why not? Is it an upgrade though? Yeah. So now my shield looks like this. A bit more appropriate for a mage. So let's see how effective the iron pickaxe is. Oh my god, that's so much better. This is twice as fast as my previous pickaxe. Mining is no longer going to be tedious for me. I think we've got everything we need to upgrade our flame altar to the max level. Oh, never mind, we need sparks. Level 24. Actually, thinking about it, the fact that the game requires me to have 40 sparks to level up the flame altar to the max level suggests to me that it's intended that you go to the main menu and reset all of the loot that way because each of these only give me four sparks like realistically you're just going to grab one two three within gliding distance reset the game and then just do the same thing again and that just feels like really weird design to me back to the flame shrine tp back here glide to the next one it's just really bizarre design like the flame shrines in general 
the more I think about it, the more it actually does seem like this game is designed with being reset in mind. I hope I'm wrong though, because that's really weird. I'd almost say that it feels fundamentally flawed, in fact. The fact that return to main menu just bypasses the entire shroud mechanic as well. It makes you think that it's not worth compromising the integrity of the map to having this weird canyon-like design over a trivial mechanic that can just be bypassed pretty much instantly. And now we can finally strengthen the flame. Flame level six. One more area left to explore and we have finished and shrouded for now. <sighs> Big damage. We literally just killed three mobs with one ability. Oh shit, he's just summoned everyone. I mean, I need to be careful. I'm still a glass cannon. <sighs> literally one shot me, 100 to zero. So I suppose it's fair that I do so much damage because the mob can do that. Not even gonna feel bad about one shotting the mobs anymore. I'm not even gonna feel like I'm cheesing given the fact that they can literally one shot me. Okay, what's inside of this temp? Oh, you can't open it. Oh, okay. Reach level 25? How? What did I do to get to level 25? Well, there it is, I guess. So now I'm level 25. I'm getting zero XP. So 25 is the cap right now in early access. When you get to the end game, you are absolutely sick of searching these temples for the switches. I'm just so bored of it. And then there's always that one switch that you just can't find. Every time I go into a point of interest where I need to find switches, I'm just like, so done. Surely there's some good loot up here. This was a hell of an endeavor to reach the top. Oh, this is where you get your legendary glider. Okay, it was worth it. Obtain the extraordinary glider. For the first time in this game, I've ascended a temple, which has given me good loot. Excellent. So this glider is level 30. Let's spread my wings and fly, I suppose. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's good. Now we're pumping some distance. Let's just do a little test. Let's fly into the pike and see how long it takes me to kill the pike boss with this. Fell Whisper Wyvern. And this was the only boss that felt like a boss early in the game. Oh, it's dead. At this point, I'd pretty much finished the early access version of Enshrouded. All I had left to do was reveal the map and clear out the final shroud route, which would give me the last skill points needed to finalize my build. Once I did that, I wanted to see whether or not the range and melee builds were as overpowered as the mage one, so I spent some time grinding for gear via gold chest relog spam and changed my build. So I've been out and about grinding and I've managed to pick up the current best in slot mage gear, as well as the current best in slot melee and range gear. The full eagle eye set, level 25, full paladin set, poison iron arrows, like the best ammo that I could make. Reset skill points, very cheap to do so. Now we go for a ranger build. When you are targeted by an attack, wild animals within 50 meters will attack the enemy. Interesting. Let's equip the ranger gear. How do we look? Oh man, the eagle eye ranger set looks really cool. What about with the bow? So you've got two choices. You've got like a long bow with a longer draw time or you've got a short bow. We're gonna try both. Let's try this first. So now we test the enshrouded ranger. Is it strong? Okay, we just two hit him. We just hit a 1,000. It hits hard. It hits very hard. I was expecting it to be much weaker than that. Yeah, this is with a longbow though. And when you're in combat with a longbow, it's really hard to get attacks off. So it kind of needs to do a lot of damage. Right, let's level up the composite bow. Apparently we deal more damage against flying creatures. So let's see if we can just one shot this thing. Not quite. Well, the damage on that's really pitiful. Could still kill it before it even got to me though, to be fair. It's not that bad. Yeah, you do feel quite strong as an archer. Oh, that's nice when you get a headshot and you just one shot the enemy. You definitely hit harder with the bow than you do the wand, which you would expect. I feel like the bow is just balanced. It doesn't feel ridiculous. It doesn't feel stupid like the stuff where you walk into an area and things just die simply because you exist. Next, we try melee, and this is what the level 25 paladin set looks like. Pretty cool, and I've got loads of awesome legendary 25 weapons. Enhance all this equipment, pump everything up. So I think this is surely going to be the best weapon in the game, because it literally has 25% increased crit chance. That's huge. And I think this will probably be the best two-hander, because it's just pure blunt damage. Let's re-roll to melee. Please be fun.
Let's go test out the power of melee. I don't know why, but I just feel like melee is going to be the weakest. I hope I'm wrong. Melee always gets fucked in games, typically. Will this game be any different? What the fuck was that damage? Like, that is awful damage. What the fuck? In terms of damage, like melee damage is straight up worse. Maybe that's just the sword. Okay, let's try the big hammer. Maybe two-handed is better. Okay, yeah, that hits hard. If you do a jump attack. I mean, I can tank tons of damage because I feel like health leech. So there's that. I guess, like, I'm not squishy. Let's see how we do against this boss. We can, like, cleave down the mobs. Got, like, better mobility. Bro, melee feels rough. If you're just playing two-handed melee, you're going against some flying fucker. Not much you can do, is there? Switch back to the one hand. Let's try this sword. Oh, this hits a little bit better. The ice sword. Maybe this sword is just a piece of shit. Like, this feels way better with the ice blade. I think you just need to have the right weapon. You got, like, so much survivability as melee as well. Like, you just don't take much damage. So I guess that's another reason why the damage maybe should be a little bit lacking. I think I might have been fighting these mobs without my elixir buff. Okay, I realized that I was doing this without the elixir buff last time, so let's do this again. I've got the fucking elixir buff for sure this time. I'm still doing potato damage. So I guess my enshrouded playstyle tier list would be as follows. Number one, staff and wand mage build. Number two, ranger. Number three, one-handed melee. Number four, 200 melee. But this game is so easy that it really doesn't matter what you play. You can beat the game with any build, so just pick what you think looks cool. At this point, I'm about 50 to 60 hours deep in Enshrouded, and I think I've seen pretty much all there is to see at this moment in early access. So let's wrap up the video here. So after playing Enshrouded for around 50 hours or so, and feeling like I've pretty much seen everything there is to see at this stage of early access, my review of the game so far is as follows. Pros. It has the best voxel-based building system I've seen in a survival RPG. Cozy aesthetic, great visuals, and nice lighting. Massive open world without loading screens unless you fast travel. The game doesn't bore you with hours of dialogue. It feels very create-your-own-adventure, which I like. I think it's incredible that you can take over existing structures in the world as your own base simply by placing a flame altar there. The general gameplay and movement feels fluid, the gliding and glider progression feels fun, the combat is decent by survival RPG standards, solid talent tree with multiple interesting talents to pick up, digging up buried treasure with your mining pick feels really cool, the mining system in this game in general is S tier, you can mine your way through a mountain if you like. I think it's super cool that crafting furniture and making a nice house actually has an impact on your rested stats. It costs almost nothing to re-roll build and you're not punished for doing so, and you can take the character that you've made in your single player game, then use that same character in a hosted game or a joined public game, and keep your progress, which makes playing with friends very easy. Cons. The loot system in Enshrouded feels fundamentally broken, so much so that it ruins other aspects of the game. What's the point in crafting any gear if I can get a better version of the crafted gear by simply building a flame altar next to a gold chest, then exiting and entering the game over and over until I've got a full set of gear with an inventory full of legendary items? It actually feels like the game expects you to do this, as there's not enough gold chests on the map to obtain all of the gear if it used a static loot system very odd design. The shroud mechanic that the game is built upon can be bypassed completely by simply exiting to the main menu, then re-entering the game, so you'll never actually die due to being in the shroud for too long. As you reach the end game, you'll start to realise that the entire world basically consists of either canyon valleys or mountain peaks. There's nothing in between. This is of course to facilitate the enshrouded areas being at the bottom of the canyons, but this design just makes map traversal feel so tedious after a while. There's a lot of copy and paste in the world, from the elixir wells to buildings and basements. Every enshrouded area looks and feels the same from the start of the game to the end. Typically, I love exploring in these kind of games, but it felt like I just knew what to expect as I progressed through enshrouded and thus stopped exploring, which is kind of sad.
You're basically fighting higher level versions of the same mobs from the start of the game to the end, with the exception of different animals in each biome. The game is extremely easy and the bosses don't really feel like bosses, more like elite mobs. The game's balancing needs a lot of work, staff and wand combo feels completely broken, whilst melee feels underwhelming. I dislike that storage space inventory and storage convenience is tied to progression, as it made the early game feel quite tedious, and even at endgame you're constantly pumping more and more storage chests due to the sheer amount of mats in the game, combined with the arbitrarily low stack sizes. The UI feels very early access and clunky, which is to be expected, to be fair. The game basically feels unplayable without the rested buff, so if you die you need to go through an extra two loading screens, TPing back and forth to your home to get the buff again. This wouldn't be an issue if you actually died to mobs, which is rare, but due to the entire world either being Canyon Valley or Mountain Peak, you're constantly dying to full damage whilst exploiting your glider boost. And after a while, the structure of the game's progression starts to feel quite predictable, and you don't really have any climactic moments to look forward to as you beat one biome and transition to another. Thinking back on my time playing in Shrouded, there wasn't really any oh shit moments when it came to my character being challenged, except maybe for the dragon boss, and even then it was more spectacle than challenge. Overall, I did enjoy my time with Enshrouded, but I do think it's quite a fundamentally flawed game, primarily due to its loot system combined with the annoying world design, gimmicky shroud mechanic, repetitive POIs, and a lack of epic boss fights or memorable moments. The thing that impresses me the most with Enshrouded by far is the building mechanics and terrain manipulation, and the game is still in early access, so if the devs can address some of my issues with it, then it has potential to be a really incredible game. On average though, I'd say my experience with Enshrouded was probably somewhere between a 6.5 and a 7 out of 10 on the fun level. I do love these kind of games, and this trend of blending survival with RPG is quickly becoming one of my favourite genres. Enshrouded will definitely be a game that I revisit again on this channel either sometime next year or for the next big major update to see how it improves, because typically survival games do only get better over time, and half of the map is still in darkness, so I think we'll see some really interesting developments with this game in the future. But that's it for this video, as always let me know your thoughts on Enshrouded in the comments below. Do you agree with my pros and cons list? Is there anything I forgot to mention? I think it's interesting how my full reviews differ from my first impressions. It seems the reviews are actually slightly more negative, so if I rate a game an 8 out of 10 in the first impressions, it's probably going to be a 7 out of 10 for the full review. Help us out with a like to appease the algorithm gods, and to also show me that you want to see more of this kind of content. Social media on screen, thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.